Hello. Can everyone hear me? Good afternoon. Good evening. Can everyone hear me? Not yes. A, okay, awesome. Good to see you, Miss Elizabeth. Yes. We shall get started. Uh, we have three minutes. Um, keep yourselves on mute, please, until you need to unmute. Pleasure to see all of y'all beautiful faces. Make sure I don't have anybody in this waiting room. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. I apologize in advance last week. I took a look at that video and I looked like Casper the Friendly Ghost. So I actually, wait, that is not how I look. This may change, but it's me, it's really me. Okay, awesome. Let me admit some folks in here. Admit, admit. I'm missing a couple of people. They have time. Thank you guys for adhering to to be early is on time. To be on time is late. To be late is unacceptable. And we've been recording. One more minute, we'll officially get started. I think I'm missing one person. Is anyone waiting? We have Asia Traore, is that correct? Arian Lyons, Andrea Robinson, Angel. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Angel Malai. Malai. Uh, where did this go? Ashley Kegg, Ashlyn May, Brittany Henderhan, Cheyenne Baldwin, Elizabeth Olukumli, Elizabeth Hosek, or Lizzie. Jaskarandeep Kaur, I tried. Jasmine Dickerson, Jessica Andres, Kim Rodriguez, Leticia Bato, Mackenzie Chavez. And there's someone I need to admit, Chis, Cherise Hodges. Yay, we're all here and accounted for. Excellent, and we will get started. Good. Evening again. You have Professor Jennifer Harrison Howard. It's a pleasure seeing all your beautiful faces. This is week two. We have tons of stuff to cover, and then I am also slated to um, do uh, my uh, week, uh, my review for exam one, eight p.m. Eastern. So. I know you guys have seen tons of emails to come out. Um, we are required to post the YouTube reviews from other professors, just in case you guys are not able to make your particular professor's um, review. It is not mandatory, but highly encouraged that you attend or at least review. I personally, because I'm, I'm new to Fortis, but I'm not new to public health or community health. I've reviewed all of them. They're all, everybody has a different style or a different spin. Um, we all cover a certain PowerPoint that we make sure that, you know, some people emphasize more than others. So if you're not able to make it to, to my review tonight, which is fine, just review the recordings. Every single, oh, okay. Every single, um, recording that I have is sent to me from the other community health folks, and then I pass it on to you guys. Um, the exam will take place in class um, next week. It is going to be proctored by myself and actually the lead community health uh, instructor 
for online, um, and that will be Dr. Lundy, who's my direct person as well. Um, so let's get started. Again, this is interactive. You guys, um, there will be a quiz, not anything that's gonna be graded on. The case study information that everyone, you can nod or raise your hand, because we're, we're gonna talk about it. It ties beautifully into your readings for week one and week two. Did ever, did raise by a raise of hand, and there's a, let me just kind of, let me just look. I seem like I'm missing some faces. Um, looks like some people are getting kicked in and out. So I don't want to digress. We actually, after every, Kim Rodriguez, I need to see your, your beautiful face. I need to see faces, please. Um, I have to post attendance after every class and I literally use what well, we're required to use the Zoom log. So that's why, especially my, my favorite go-to to be early is on time, log in because that's what I use um, and I have to turn it in. And if I get, I'm, remember I'm watching you, I'm being watched people as always, and so if I give Miss Letitia an extra break because but she was 20 minutes late, I can they, they can audit me and like, okay. And then I get a direct call from Dean Brown. And so, so make sure you guys, I don't see Kim. Why, uh, Kim, if you can hear me, I need to see your face. Oh, my video- She sent a message. It's just going in and out. Yeah. I just haven't seen it's you. It's on. I, yeah. I, 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 I saw like, it once and then it just disappeared. <laughs> so for an hour, so I, minute, turned, I need to some, some part see your face. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm a stickler on some things. Like if I had seen your face and then it went out and I seen your face, but I hadn't seen your face at all. So I need to, we need to get that. Fix. Again, everything yeah, is I'll, maybe I'll you go. I'll go out and go back in. So so anyway, anyway, um do you provide do you guys provide slow it down? Do you guys prefer to go straight or take a 10 minute break? If you want to take a 10 minute break, raise your hand. If you don't raise your hand, that means I'm gonna just keep going and we're gonna get off at 1:30 ish. Straight, okay, I'm straight too. All right, all right. So then, so for this class period, we, we're gonna cover a lot of things. We're gonna see a few things. You should have had a chance to, to take a look at the case study synopsis that I sent out that talked about your nurse in an urban hospital. Um, if anyone has not reviewed that, okay, let me admit someone. It's gonna be covered today, all right? And then what's gonna happen is I created a poll so that you guys can answer the questions and we can talk about it. I don't know what happened to my poll. So um, I'm, we're gonna go through this together. But once we go through everything and I discuss the concepts, that's gonna really help tie, uh, tie everything together for you. So first question, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna call on people. I'm sure you guys don't wanna hear my voice for an hour and a half straight. So public health nursing or community health, is this a new, from your readings, is this a new concept, public health nursing, or has it been around for a long, long time? Asia, unblock your, unmute yourself, talk to me. Um, I mean, it's a new concept to me, but I know it's been around for a while. Miss Ashley, Keg, talk to me. Um, I know it's been around, at least around here in Akron, like it, there's public health centers, multiple right. just within the city. So I know it's been around. In your readings, do they talk about, you know, the history of public health nursing? Jasmine, is it public health nursing? Is this something new? 
Have folks heard about Florence Nightingale and what she did back in one of these wars many, many years ago, how she would check on the wounds of the soldiers and wonder why their uh, wounds weren't healing, what was going on, were we washing our hands, that sort of thing. So public health nursing, even though it's new, of course you guys have not, you know, maybe necessarily heard of it, but every Ebola, every H1N1, every swine flu, all of that is a public health emergency and you're gonna have many different entities involved, but you're always gonna have that specialized nursing, that community health nurse, that public health nurse to help bring that down to the community and do her, her teaching, her education, her different levels of prevention. So I just want to add one thing. Sorry, if I'm, um, there, that's me here. Oh, my screen in your way. Did you see me? I see you now. Okay, I just want to say that um, there, there was a woman. Her name was Mother Teresa. If you have heard of her name, Mother have you ever heard? Teresa is my hero. She's now yeah. one of the saints. Right. So she is kind of on my idol too, and the way that how she used to help people. That that's also um, a community thing that we can. That was consider. her community. Never yeah. worry about numbers. Help exactly. one person at a time, and always start with the person nearest you. Mother Teresa yeah. of Calcutta. Anyone that's else want to share before? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, love Mother Teresa. <laughs> I do. I do. She's I know. So much, so much. Dedicated her life to service to the community, her community. Yes, Miss Lyons. I was, it was interesting when I was doing some research about community nursing. I know, mm -hmm. like we talked about, it's been around, I think, since like 1850 ish, but I have never known much about it. And as I was, there was a, um, some information on Texas Women's University. Okay. that um, I was reading about. Um, but it was interesting that the theory of community nursing started because of soldiers in the war that was happening in Britain. And I just thought that was interesting that um, yeah, yeah. so long yeah. ago that they saw a need for the community to come together, where it's, whereas a community of um, soldiers who were injured or a it's community with- you're Whoever is involved in your community, very good. And one community, of course, looks different from another community. Right. I was actually out earlier this week with a group of community uh, RN, RN to BSN. Um, they're doing their windshield survey. So I don't want to digress too much. I, I don't know if that's part of you guys' curriculum. Um, so they're riding around in their cars and, uh, and assessing the community from the windshield. Um, so there, this is something different because they're so used to med surge passing this, passing that. Um, so it's not about um, passing the medication to the person on time and what have you. This is a different, you have to shift your focus and think about the whole, the unit, whoever your community might be. So then your clients would be, not, not of course, the, the folks in your community, but it might be the folks in your the church as well. It might be the schools, whoever's involved in the, the well-being of that particular community is who you want to eventually get to know. So the first couple of chapters talked about the need for public health nursing. And you guys, I'm not trying to, I've done it uh, on the reservation. That's what brought me out here to Arizona for eight years or what have you. Um, and I'm also a public health service officer with the uh, United States Public Health Service. I don't know if you guys have heard of us. If you have not heard of us, raise your hand. I just wanna do a quick United States Public Health Service. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you know who we are. So quick spill, pack of cigarettes, says on the side, the Surgeon General says, so I work for the, I work for the Surgeon General. So back in 1798-ish, when the nation's health was going to, the president at that time was like, we need a doctor for the people. And then your first Surgeon General. And Surgeon General was like, I need some people to help me out because I can't do this all by myself. So you always have doctors, you always have nurses. So um, we are, are, I am stationed, um, I'm active duty. So 
I'm stationed on the reservation and that's my community, regardless of if I'm a public health nurse or right now I'm a nurse practitioner, it's always improving the health and well-being of my indigenous community here or what have you. So just keep that in mind, your community is, um, is your, your focus. So then one specialty nursing that you will read about and we'll, we'll talk about and you may see it again is school health, school nurses. Have you, does anyone have, raise your hand, we can, I can see everybody, school age children, would they have to be involved with their nurse? Okay, okay, okay. We don't have to, you don't have to tell me individually what's going on with your child or what have you, but those women and men, and we're gonna we're gonna watch a short video. They are angels. Not only are they focusing on here we go, primary, secondary, tertiary. You know, they're that's their community, and they you get to know them. If you have a child with a chronic condition or what have you, you get to know them. They they're intimately involved in your lives. Or you may hear about them once a year when they send a form home and say, okay, if your child gets checked for this. Or, the scoliosis check. I don't know if they still do that. Dating myself. That was, that was something we all had to go down to the school health office and dip and like, oh, check your spine, all of that. That's um, that's pretty much what they do. So um, two big things to remember about. I'm just looking at my notes here, guys, because I don't want to, I don't want to forget anything here, is that. They're going to record immunizations, so they're going to give immunizations. They keep track of all of that. They, I've got notes home. Has your daughter Isabel received her flu shot for this year? And I'm like, yeah. Did I forget to send it in? So they have to. They keep record of all of all, all of those things as, as well. You know, God forbid there be an outbreak of something, and someone hasn't received their vaccine, or if they even have um, documentation of uh, religious purposes, they still have to keep track of that. Um, that's one of the big things they do. They assess for head lice, um, along with diseases. Just think of like head to toe. Um, someone comes in with head lice and then they've got to check the entire class and then educate the parents, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so one of the things you want to consider is, especially when you think of, um, well, public health, if you can remember community health, public health, you'll use, you'll see those words interchangeably. Primary, secondary, tertiary. If you get those three down in your brain, when you see on a test, you should be good. I'm just, that's, that's, that's the short version. If they're asking you to identify what's primary, secondary, tertiary, um, if you don't know the difference, so then Miss Andrea, give me, tell me about uh, primary. Uh, immunizations. That's true. What's the focus on though? To prevent the disease. Ah, there you go. There you go. Christy. Hey, Miss Nichols. How are you? You're looking good today. <laughs> Thank you. Secondary. Talk to me. Okay. So secondary, to me, secondary is like screenings and stuff yes. like that. Mm -hmm. Screenings. What else, um, Jessica? I'm trying to read your hat, but I can't. Miss Andres, Andres, you can unmute. It's car. <laughs> huh? Um, That's secondary would be like education on like That's quitting primary. smoking. That's primary. Like the programs. Okay, um, we'll come back to that. Anyone else want to? Let's start. Lizzie, or you like Lizzie, Miss Posick? I actually went back and read. I'm like, ooh, she likes to be called Lizzie. So sorry about that last week. Got it right this time. Talk to me about a little bit more about secondary. Um, doesn't it include like mammograms? That's so think three. I think it's part of like a specialty. Like if you're going to see an oncologist or a cardiologist. 
right? No. Or, okay. I think Miss Elizabeth, I heard you. Were yeah, you for ready? secondary, I, I think it's more like, you know, to go for breast examination, all those things, you know, to get screened earlier. Let me help y'all out. Let me help y'all out. Um, no, before I do, look, before I help you, before I help you, before I help you, tertiary, let me call on who I have, Ashlyn. I see you, Ms. May. Um, isn't that more treatment? So like secondary is like screening and treatment and tertiary is like treatment. I'll take that. Ms. Therese, you said anything to me today? Hodges? Um, secondary, I would say that's like somebody who already has a disease and you want to prevent further complications. Tertiary. So let me help you all out. I mean, so, tertiary. No, 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 no. That's why we have class today. And that's why I'm here. Again, I have a master's in public health, which means none but I love it. I had my master's in public health before the nursing came. I am a prevention diva because anything and everything that I do, I try to is wherever you are, I'm going to meet you. You know, you always want to leave the patient better than how you left. You found them. Just keep that in the back of your mind, no matter what you do, if you're in the jail, if you went to this, that, and the other, that's your goal for that shift, for that time that you work there as an AGC nurse, from that, if you're in the house for an hour, you want to leave them in a better place as best as you can. So primary, they don't have anything. Primary is what you do to pee prevent. So the number one thing that's in my heart are immunizations. Now, I know I'm not going to get into all the politics and stuff, you know, all of this because it messed it all up because people didn't have the, I'm not going to get into all that. So think prevent, P prevent. You don't have nothing. So you're going to educate, 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 vaccinate, 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 prevent them from getting it as best you can. I'm, I got the COVID and I still got COVID. Yeah, no. I'm just keeping it simple, black and white, prevent. You're going to try to. Nothing, nothing's 100%. I've had women to get their tubes tied and still got pregnant. And I, I digress. I'm trying not to. Nothing in life is 100%. I say abstinence, but then again, I can go down that road, but I'm not going to. You won't make me. Um, secondary, S, and I got this from listening to one of the other professors. I'm like, I never thought of that word. Because I already, I've had it drilled in my head for so many years. Secondary S's, she said screening. She said survey. She said surveillance. They still ain't got nothing yet. They ain't got nothing. Screening, surveillance, survey. Women, screening. Colonoscopy, y'all know they changed that to 45s. Maybe because of the Black Panther. I don't know. He died of colon cancer. He used to start at 50. Did y'all know that? They changed it? Did anybody, did anyone know they changed it? No? Y'all too busy being in school? That's okay. So now I recommend it earlier to my women instead of 50. And they look at me crazy, but I was like, that's where you get to know your community and you build that trust. And it's like, okay. All right, so that tertiary, they have something. So anytime you see a, I'm gonna do a little bit of test stuff. Anytime you see anything on a, first of all, read your scenarios, all right? No one's trying to trip you up. If they got something, it's already tertiary. You haven't prevented anything, not you, because it's not your fault. You haven't prevented anything. You haven't screened anything. They got it. So if they come up and they got it, then they got it. So that's tertiary automatically. If you, t you know, what do they say? Early detection, you know, breast cancer, you know, like you found a lump and then this, that, and the other, because, you know, you educate women. And I'm sorry, I'm a women's, not sorry, I'm a women's health nurse practitioner. So I'm like, women, you need to check your ladies every month to see what they feel like. So if you feel something that's not right, then you need to come to this, this, this. So that's, pr um, that's primary. I'm educating you on the importance of checking the ladies. When you hit 40, or depends on which 
guidelines you follow started. You know, hey, you know, Miss Lyons, did you get your breast cancer this year? You gotta get your screening. I'm still educating, but when you get the screening, <laughs> when you come in for your screening, that's secondary. And I'm not gonna put anything out in the atmosphere if somebody has breast cancer. Man, you're looking at the chemo. You know, my voice changes. It's so sad because it can be detected. Early time you detect something, early on is the best thing. So you detect it. I've done endometrial biopsies on postmenopausal women that are bleeding, and then they have endometrial cancer. So they have cancer. I can't prevent it. They got it. I can't screen for it. I did a test. Um, detected it, so now they have it, and then they get either chemo, radiation, or get their uterus removed, that's tertiary. And then you deal with the rehab piece of bouncing back from all of that. Do they need to go to a rehab stint or what have you? As a public health nurse, if you, you're you gonna live in primary, secondary, or, sec, or community nurse, but if you see someone has something, so it's easy for me to say, oh, that's easy. Do they have something? Does the, does the scenario say they have something? They got something, then that's tertiary. If you're trying to do the S's, you're screening for something, surveys, surveillance, that's secondary. Think primary, you've given them a shot or you're educating them. I don't know how many times I've gone to the schools when I was on the reservation, out to my Indian schools and go to the middle school and talk to them about STDs and parents' permission, all of that stuff. So I'm educating. And then afterwards, we open it up for, believe it or not, we do gonorrhea, chlamydia checks in the urine. That's a screening. They don't have to. And if they have chlamydia, then they got a disease. Then they get the antibiotics. But if they listened to me last semester and abstained, use condoms and listen to my education, then the screening with the secondary would have been negative. They would have never been a tertiary. Okay. All right, so at this point, um, yeah, let me make sure I, I don't forget this. And then we're gonna talk a little bit more about the school nurses. I don't wanna get off track. Vulnerable populations, so McKenzie, I don't think I've called McKenna. Oh, I'm so sorry, Miss Chavez. It's easier for me. Give me an example. And again, this is a judgment-free zone. This is your class, so no, no wrong answer. Just tell me when you think vulnerable population. Give me one particular subgroup. Um, Low-income populations. I'll take that, Miss May Ashlyn. You know I was calling you, did you? Yeah, got you. <laughs> What was the question? I don't know what I said. Somebody want to tell me what I said? Vulnerable population. Give me an example when you think vulnerable. So she already said lower income, so I guess like it should be like elderly. Thank you, Miss Battle. I don't know why it's just like your screen. I mean, you're here, but it's like giving me. Is their screen looking weird to you guys too? Sometimes it goes in and out. Sometimes it'd be like green and flashing or something. Okay. But you can hear me. Okay, so give me vulnerable. Um, children. Children, yes. Children, elderly, everything that you guys listed. I mean, I'm not gonna exhaust the list. It's not every single person in the entire universe or what have you. But vulnerable are the that's another focus. And when when you when you do your community assessment, again, I don't want to get into what you guys do for your clinicals. I don't know if you have clinicals. I don't know how Fortis does that. But um, that's your focus as well. There's a lot. I know it's like, oh, there's a lot of focus. But when you get to know your community, it'll, it'll make sense. So let me share my screen with you guys and see if I can pull up. Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm -mm -mm. Give me just a second. I'll share that. Um, looking for my video. No. Thank you guys for being patient with me. I'm getting there. 
Maybe I need to try to show. So go this way. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm the school nurse. I do a little bit of everything from ice packs to. We can't see anything. We see ourselves. We see crossover into plant counts. Okay. Sometimes. Okay. So much more than ice bags and band aids. Okay. Let me try. Thank you guys for being patient. Let me try to switch. Do we have folks from other sections here today? It says 20 participants. I think we have folks from another, do you, from another class? No? I only see 19. We have 18. It doesn't matter. I just was like, who is this? this, 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 this. And we're missing, I don't see Mr. Whitehead. Is he here? He was weird. And so I don't see Mr. Whitehead, Jonathan, because that would make it 17. So I'm just wondering if someone's from another group. That's fine. All right, you guys. I not I'm not gonna get off track here. So Try one more thing and then we'll just move on. I really wanted you guys to see this. I'm pouty now. Okay, well, maybe this will do. Can you see it now? Yes? Yes, I can. God is yes. good all the time. All the time. All the time. I'm the school nurse. I do a little bit of everything from ice packs to abrasions and cuts to immunization compliance. We cross over and the plant counselor sometimes. So much more than ice bags and band-aids. A lot of our kids that are maybe dealing with something emotional or a challenge at home, the first thing that will come up is something physical, right? So a headache, a stomach ache, something like that. So I'm often the first person that they see in that type of situation and can determine is this something that's a physical cause or is this more of an emotional thing going on and then get them the help that they need right here at school. My job covers a lot of different arenas. I also help case manage kids with chronic conditions. Some of them are medically fragile kiddos. Maybe they go see their doctor every couple of months or once a year, depending on the severity of their condition. But I am one of the most consistent healthcare providers that kids see since I am here at school. So you get pain and then you feel like you can go up. I work at long-term care and then I work at the hospital setting. You know, in the hospital, we're pushed to our limits these days, expected to do more and more with less and less help. Here at the school, you get to you know, get to work with kids and hopefully make a difference in their life and see them smile and be with them during struggles as well as happy times. And, you know, so you get to see kind of the whole gamut with them. And I love that part. I like that I can build relationships with staff, with kids, with families, because I am here five days a week, um, and I am a consistent part of their their lives, um, and can be a person that they trust and that they know and that's familiar that they can come to when they're not feeling well, when they're in pain, um, when they're scared. Okay.
All right, you guys, let me exit out I of it. Let me go back. All righty, so what is your first impression, Ms. Traore? I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Please correct me. It's Aisha. Aisha, your last mm -hmm. name? Traore. Traore, okay. So what's your first impression? I'm going to ask a couple of patients, patients from patients. <laughs> that was earlier today. What is your first impression of the school health nurse, especially if you weren't familiar with what they do? Just when you saw the video, what, what were you thinking? Like, oh, they, they, do, they do quite a um, bit. Well, I actually have a friend that's a school nurse. So nice, nice. pretty much like exactly what she says. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, what about you, Miss Elizabeth Olakunle? What sticks out for you? Well, initially, um, when I heard of school nurse, I thought when your child is sick, they will treat the child. Yeah. Until most times I just get a call from the school, like you need to pick them up or something like that, you know, and I take them that. to the hospital by yourself. So yeah, it's yeah, a different yeah, yeah. thing. They do a lot. You saw in that video, you saw um, someone with a, well, you saw tertiary all day long. You saw the asthma, the cute, little cutie was getting his nebulizer treatment because he probably was running, 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 running around. Just a quick question that I don't know. Does schools have their own nurses for the kids? Mm, they should. Yes. <laughs> they should. They should. They, they should. should. All they do. They do. I, I hesitated for a moment because um, even on the reservation, we because we had we went for a while without having one and then we had to step in as public health nurses to cover. So, mm -hmm. yes, because if you you have a child with an, um, a chronic condition, let's say insulin to type one diabetes and you don't have a school nurse, that teacher is not. Good to judge. Like I, yeah. I'm, I'm being recorded. So yeah, you, you need to have some type of medical personnel there. You know, Makes some sense. schools may even have like a tech that can do certain things, some type of medical person. They may have, I don't want to spend too, they may have standing orders or something that they can go with. Let's just say if they have a CNA or someone other than a nurse, um, oh, yeah. a nurse may be responsible for several schools and then you have someone that's a tech, the nurse tech that's there. But anyway, yes, yes, you need, you need, you're supposed to have somebody because you're going to have Perfect. kids there that, that need medical attention. Someone's going to, at the very least, fall down and hurt face something, something. That's what everybody thinks of. Pick your kid up, pick your kid up. You know, we gave them Tylenol and the Tylenol wore off. I'm not the only one. <laughs> and also, um, Ms. Jennifer, that's yes. why in the school form, they ask you to post if your child is taking any medication, you know, Absolutely. so that they can treat the child when anything comes. Right, right. And talk, and then if I was a school nurse, I would review that, and then I would start a file on my kids. I would round on them. I've never personally been a school nurse, except for the time we needed to stand in. But that's their way of getting to know their their community. And you can see there's there's male nurses there as well. So absolutely. So you're gonna use you're gonna see a lot of med surge. You're gonna be using your your um, all of the different skills that you learned um, for your community. So even when I when I was a public health nurse, I still needed to have a basic knowledge of, you know, you know what an infection looks like and that sort of thing, what have you. So there, he, this particular gentleman that someone that was uh, we just saw there, he obviously was like, I'm done with the hospital. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a male school nurse. Um, they can be. They are. And so just when I saw the video, I'm like, good for him. Good for him. Um, so that's what I, I love about school nurses as well, is that they they know your kid sometimes. <laughs> She's like, I'm sometimes the only consistent person they have. Um, there's words that stood out for me was trust, consistent, you know, as we were all, you know, little ones. We, we, we I don't know, I had consistent favorite teachers I would look forward to seeing. Please tell me I was, especially in elementary school. I remember my favorite elementary teacher. I was looking forward to seeing her every, every Monday or what have you. And so those, those positive, positive role models, that's the, that's the word I was looking for. That's what we want. So 
she's three things I wrote down when I watched you for the team time, but just hearing it with you guys, build a relationship, consistency, and trust. You know how important it is for, I, I'm give me one second, Ms. Cheyenne. Um, important for children to trust and build that trust with adults. Yes, Ms. Cheyenne, where do you go? People be coming and going. I thought your hand was up. There you are. You are over here. Did you have your hand up, Ms. Baldwin? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, I like how also with the school nurses, like they're not just talking about treating, um, you know, the asthma or the pains or the bumps and bruises, but they're also talking about how when they're walking and they're also assessing like the emotions of the kids and they're yes. making those bonds so that they have the trust. So if there are things that are going on and they have a stomach ache because they're in emotional distress. Instead, they have that bond mm -hmm. with the kids that they can, you know, find out those exactly. situations as well. I mean, exactly. I mean, how many times have we, you know, when you walk into a doctor's office or a nurse practitioner's office and you're like, I'm not feeling them. Let me just finish this visit. I may or may not be back. Or maybe it's just me. Trust is trust and important. Or not, I wanted to say that the front office, like I love the doctor, I love the NP, but the front office, mm -mm, gotta go. So trust is important. And it, 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 be, it begins, you know, it begins when we're, when we're young. And so that's another thing. When you guys are out or if you do community health nursing or to learn about community nursing is trust, 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 trust. I, this thing that you see here that it may look insignificant. This is a ribbon that was given to me by a blessed ribbon um, from one of the elders this year here in Arizona. Um, their their uh, Catholicism is huge, but it's, I don't wanna say it's different. Cause again, I don't wanna make, I'm, I'm trying to tie in trust. I've been here 15 years. I never received a ribbon. You'll see this with the natives here. They do a pilgrimage. They do a walk to Mexico. Uh, Mexico may seem like, oh my gosh, but Mexico and Arizona, we, we're a border state, you know, like El Paso, whatever. And so they do a pilgrimage to Magdalena um, where they get come back with these ribbons that have been blessed by the Pope. And so one of the parents, uh, I, I did something for a daughter, I think like a birth control, I don't know. But the point is, is that she came back and one of those front desk folks was like, Miss Keg left something for you. I'm like, oh, and I was like, oh, because they, they're, they wear them. They don't give them away. They, so for her, she, maybe she had an extra one. So that's like a huge trust piece. And that's why I look all raggedy and stuff, but it's been blessed by the, by the Pope. So anyway, um, if you need to take like a quick, 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 like water break or something, just come back. I don't, again, I'm going to just keep going. All right. So let me make sure here. Um, one more, one more, one more short little clip, ladies and gent. Oh, we don't have the gent, ladies. All right. Let me get back on it. Um, this is not it. Give me a moment. Let me see if this is it. Kids are a lot of foster kids, a lot of parents that are not in the picture. And we've got about 500 and some kids. Can you guys see this? That are not in the picture. And we've got okay. about 500. And it's three minutes. Kids are a lot of foster kids, a lot of parents that are not in the picture. And we've got about 500 and some kids. So I'm the sole medical provider of you know, over 600 people here. I have been here for two years as a school nurse. Before that, I did trauma, ICU, and urgent care. So this was completely different for me. I love it. There is so much more than like band-aids and boo-boos. I mean, there are days when I'm more busy, I get to see over hundred kids a day. I have tried to make this a safe zone so that those kids can come in here, and they do. It's, it's very busy, and you got to be able to multitask. Some students come down a couple times a week, trying to upset stomach. Could just be anxiety. It's important to be able to multitask and learn. Great, honey. I will see you tomorrow. You know, just talking to them at their level, getting down to them face to face, talking to them. A lot of these kids are dealing with so many different stressors in their life. You don't know 
on a day-to-day -day basis what they're going through. We have big poverty in our neighborhood. So uh, we're really lucky here at the school. We have parent advocates and we also have Gallagher Youth Services in the community. So that's amazing that we have that right here in our own building. And also having like continuity of care, they see me every day. And that's something that I think is important because some of them don't see family members or certain people in their lives every day. So they know that I'm always here. Here we have first grade through sixth grade. And one little girl, she has pretty good asthma. She needs her healer. And to see her uh, want to come in as a first grader, trying to teach her how to properly use the inhaler and watch her grow um, as she goes to second grade and third grade and her maturity level and how she's taking care of her own body. So just to watch them mature and grow, it's amazing. Oh my goodness. I mean, I do 30 prescription pills to give the guy. They need a nurse to give that. You can't have Aunt Mary doing that. Um, I've got tons of resources for the community. Kids need anything. You know, clothing, dental care, you know, physicians. I have that. It's so easy for me. And if they need help with you know, physicians, things like that, we have a complete circle that we just go to. You know, we just refer them to, you know, the pediatrician, the dentist, you know, eye exams, things like that. So I think knowing how to do the work and get their resource, it helps us get the resource back to I have such an amazing support from my community and my supervisor and the director of nursing and all of the staff here. That we are one huge cohesive group. We work together. We have one goal and it's to care for kids. That's one of my goals is to make sure wherever they're transitioning to next in their academic and their life that I've helped make it smoother if I can. Absolutely love it. <laughs> I've been a pediatric nurse for 19 years and I've been in various fields. And by far, I feel that I'm connecting with everybody here. I mean, the staff here is amazing. The kids are amazing. And they make a difference in my own life. That's why I do what I do. And that's the key. Find something that, find a job that you love. And you, what do they say? You ne you'll never work again or what have you. Um, I Sheriff Troy Gidry. Oh, no, 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 no. I E R Y last name. Hang on, you guys. I don't know what's going on there. Hi. Hang on. There was another video going on in my ear. So yeah, you find you 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 find your passion, you find a way to make a living with it. Hopefully everyone enjoys helping people and being nurses and you just got to find your niche. It's not, you know, community health nursing, public health nursing, there's tons of options. But anyway, let's get back on track. For me, what I loved about this video is like, you can feel the trauma ICU nurse, you can feel her passion. These, these guys, they love what they do. I mean, if you went from trauma to ICU, you didn't just fall into school health nursing. Does that make sense? I mean, I don't know if she had a kid in school or anything like that, but that's just such a vast difference. She spent her time as a trauma nurse. I did ICU. I did a lot of things, so I figured out what I wanted to do, and ICU was not for me. If you're focusing on, pub, if you love public health, ICU, I don't like catching people like that. Well, plus, they don't talk to you. Talk. So, all right. Um, Key words that I like, I love the continuity of care. That's when I think of any, any type of public health, community health, nursing, that community, when they get to know you and that trust is built in, that's, the, that's what they're expecting. That's what they're expecting to see. We'll, uh, when we were on a reservation, I may go out and help another nurse in another community or what have you. And they'll introduce me because they'll look at me like, who is this person? Are you, are you leaving us or what have you? So these guys, these kids look forward, I'm sure. They look forward to seeing their nurses and um, they work together. And then the key word is, I love it. So let's get into this case study. Um, we'll read it, we'll uh, pull it up on the screen here and then I'm going to round Robin and we'll answer these things together. We'll get through this. Again, I'm sorry about the polling. 
I created it. I don't know what happened to it. That's fine. That's fine. Either way, we'll 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 get the work done. That's what's important. So let me share my screen. Just a moment here. Does everyone see my scenario? I don't know why it's not. Okay. All right, that'll work. Everyone see the scenario. If you don't see it, let me know. If not, I'm just gonna keep on going with it. I have the answer key. And so um, what I'll do is, this is a little bit more tedious, but I appreciate you guys being patient with me. I am going to read the ant the question and the possible answers. I'm happy to read them again. And I'm gonna call on everyone at some point. Excuse me. And we'll get through this. I'll discuss the answers and I have the rationales. I actually took this myself, but I did pretty good. I'm proud of myself. So put on your community health, public health nursing hat, and here we go. You are a nurse at a local hospital in an urban area. In the past month, you have discharged the following 10 clients between the ages of 25 to 35 who are hospitalized with short-term complications of uncontrolled type 2 diabetes mellitus. Three Latino males, two African-American females, one American Indian female, two Filipino males, one Caucasian male, one Caucasian females. This has you concerned. You review your discharge planning for this population of young adults. So you just have the scenario. I have the questions here. And what I should, let me see. Let me see, give me just a second. Let's see if I have it saved somewhere. You guys could look at the answers. I'm sure you wanna see. On the question. See if I can find it. I appreciate everyone being patient with me, but if you can see it, so much better. Let me just review my things here. Um, do you guys see the case study number one community health copy or do you still see the scenario? Cheyenne, I'm going to ask you, what do you see on your screen now? I still just see the scenario on the screen that you're sharing, but okay. I have it pulled up from the announcements um, on my laptop. Okay, let me... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking, I'm gonna, give me just a second. I'm looking for something specifically. Mm. I want you to see that. I'm trying to actually share the, um, One moment, we will cover everything you guys. I promise I won't keep you any longer than I have to, but it's something I'm looking for. Okay. And if we're not able to, then that's fine. It would be a lot easier. I know you guys see it, but there's actually the document. Let me see if I can find it. And if I can't, then 
I'll get over it quickly. Um, give me one more minute to search for it in my things because that'll just make everything so much easier. If you can see here, we, you can actually see it. Um, Yeah, okay, let me try, let me try, let me try. I appreciate everyone's patience. This is gonna tie everything together, I promise you. I wouldn't be doing this if it doesn't really tie in the concepts that I like really well. Okay. All righty, so let me try it again. If not, we'll do it the old fashioned way. It. That's not it. Let me see. Please do the question to Excel. This one. Do you guys see this now? The question, which one? Now, do you see community health copy? Cheyenne, I'm going to ask you because I see your face first for some reason. We see the questions. One, yes. Two. All right. Yeah. All right, so I've just read you guys the scenario. And if you're if you're like, for some reason, Ms. Cheyenne, I think it has alphabetized. So that's why I keep looking at you because you're underneath my picture here. So if you have the scenario pulled up, it's great. So you can refer back to it. But again, let's just keep going for the essence of time. So I am going to ask everyone to read question number one. And then you, there's a multiple choice answer. So if, you, if you've already read it, I'm going to call on Ms. Rodriguez to give me her answer. Which three of these risk factors for uncontrolled type two diabetes mellitus are most capitalized, capital? words important to consider when planning care for clients at discharge select three so i need three of those miss rodriguez oh she said oh, she oh. um obesity sedentary lifestyle and family Can you enlarge it a little bit what do i need to do enlarge um I can try. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can enlarge the screen. It's mom. I don't know if I can because this is actually my um poll that I created, and for some reason it went to it didn't go into the thingy box. So I'll just can anyone else see it decently? I can, okay, so um, what happened to Ms. Rodriguez? Depending she, on what you're on Zoom with, if it's on your like phone, you can actually Zoom into it. Um, I'm not super sure you. about the computer, but like okay. on my cell phone, I can Zoom in. So if that helps. I appreciate it. I'm still waiting for an answer from Ms. Rodriguez. Are you with us? No? Okay, Jonathan, can you answer that? Give me three. Um, I would say that it's high blood pressure, um, sedentary lifestyle and obesity. That would be the three that I would choose. Why would you choose those three? Um, because high blood pressure is, is, is gonna contribute to um, type two diabetes, excuse me, type two diabetes along with a sedentary lifestyle is going to cause weight gain, um, that weight gain is going to cause trouble with insulin. Um, same with the obesity. So that's why I would choose those three. Absolutely correct. Very good. Very good. Let's move on to number two. So same scenario all the way through. What would you need to know about this population with uncontrolled type 2 diabetes to help them? That's a type of help them plan for their care after discharge. So then 
I am going to call on, I want an answer from Ms. Jessica and Ms. Keg. Anyone can go first when they're ready. Um, I would say current living arrangements, probably preferred language, of course, because you got to be able to communicate with them. And then possibly education level, because if they don't understand nothing you're saying, you need to kind of communicate in a way they're going to understand. And then Ms. Jessica, what's your answer? You can give me letters. Are you calling me Jessica? Who did I call on? I thought I said Ms. Keg and Jessica. Who did I? I forgot already. Jessica Andres, why don't you give me your answer for number two, please? Give me letters. Um, A, the education level. Um, their health status, so C, and then E. Okay, the correct answer is A, education level. Pretty much Ms. Ms. Keg gave us the response for that. Current living arrangements, current living arrangements as far as where they're going to, to manage this diabetes. And so that's your community health all day long. And then um, D is occupation. So when I think of occupation, believe it or not, what makes sense to me is, is that what are they, again, I'm thinking, are they living, a, are they working more sedentary? Are they sitting down? How are they gonna be able to manage? Are they gonna be able to you know, check their sugars, that sort of thing? Um, and then as far as preferred language, again, you want to know what language do they prefer their education material in, if you need to get a translator, all of that, because the whole point is you want them to be able to, to manage their, their chronic condition effectively. So very good job, everyone. Number three, you can read that. And then I'll give you a second to answer. Just looking for one choice. And whenever Ms. Chavez, McKenna Chavez is ready for her to give me her answer for number three. Um, I'm thinking either A, or D, I think yes. I go with A. Final answer is A? Yes. Ms. Kerr. Kerr. Yes, I Kerr. think I, I was, okay. So blood glucose monitoring is important, like, but foot care is also important as well. But I think most important is monitoring to make sure she's getting enough insulin and adequate ins insulin to keep are going. Foot care is also good to prevent any infections or anything, but most important is blood glucose monitoring. And does anyone else have another answer and a rationale they want to share? The answer is A. Okay. And the answer is A. They're all important. When you have that capital most, this is NCLEX all day, every day. Every day that ends in Y, this is NCLEX all day, every day. It's most. Foot care is important, sure. History, know your tree, know what's in your genes, you know, high fiber. That's trying to trip you up, but you know, we all need fiber, right? <laughs> you know, or what have you. But that blood glucose monitoring especially if they're on insulin, they're taking medications, you, you want to know trends, you know, as far as, as how, how that is on a daily basis. And I'm not gonna get into like your hemoglobin A1C and what have you, which gives you the average over three months whenever they come into the office, if they come in like they're supposed to. But every day, twice a day, depends. And I have some diabetic women that I follow as well. Um, I always have them check and everybody's just different fasting. I wanna know how your sugars have done during the night. 
and then after one meal, one hour after each meal. That's going to let me know right this second what's going on with you. So when folks come in and say, I've been taking my medicine, I'm taking my insulin, and, and I look at their numbers, and maybe they, they have, but then I don't want to digress too much. Blood glucose. We got some, we got, we have a few. <laughs> look at this time, geez. We have um, a few more to, to go. Um, yes, very good, guys. Read number four, and then when you're ready, I would like an answer from Miss. Lizzie and Miss Dickerson for number four. Okay, Professor, give me a minute. Can I go get my scarf from my car? I'm in the library and feeling so cold. I'll be quick. Okay, we're going to move on though. All right, yeah. you, you can do number five. I need an answer from, in place of Miss Kerr, Miss Battle. When you're ready, dear. Are we answering now? Whoever's ready first, yes. Um, Don't talk over each other. If somebody's talking and wait for the other person. Thank you. Okay, I'm stuck between the first two. I'm gonna go with the chief medical officer. Okay. I, I go with um the director of social work. So the chief medical, you said chief medical officer. Why did you choose that one, my dear? Because I feel like the medical officer has the access to like patient information as far as their diseases, their conditions. So I was thinking along the lines of that and they would be the person to go to. And then for the director of social work, why did you choose that one? Because so, social workers, they basically like they work with, like do community care in a way. The answer is director of social work. Director of social work all day, every day. Your answer is amazing for the medical officer, but that's, you're thinking med surge stuff. And that's fine, that's why we're in community health and what have you, because your shift is focused. I, when you, if you ever do community health, if you ever, I don't know what your clinicals are again, I'm trying not to digress too much. It's like, I have social workers in my pocket. I have numbers I can still call. They can get, they, they know where to get bread boxes. They know where to get food. They know where to get clothes. They can help this person get housing. If you're discharging them home to a, a cardboard box, you want, <laughs> you want a social worker. Your social worker knows the community from um, your, and there's, slow down. There are, I have a couple of friends that would RNs and switch to social work. They're, they do both because we make the most, we, well, we make the best social workers out there. That's, we're, we're in that line of work anyway. Um, if I need to find something for someone, help, a system in some kind of way with some community service or help them with um, the social aspect of the um, community, then it's gonna be the social worker. You wanna think again, all these other folks are gonna be, they, they pretty much work, think of it like they, they're, they work inside the hospital or that's their focus where the social work, even though she may be stationed, she's thinking she's working outwardly getting the people connected to psychology, so she, you know, that sort of thing. All right. So Ms. Kerr, are you back? Kerr, Kerr? Did she come oh. back with her scarf? My yeah, screen. it's so cold in the library. Okay, yeah. all right, so you got number five, and then okay. I want okay. the answer from Ms. Kerr and Ms. Hodges. Okay. When you're, when you're ready. Mm -hmm. 
or to hospital diabetes registry. Is that your answer, Ms. Kerr? Okay. No, that's not my answer. I'm asking what is. Never heard this. That's all right. Do your best. Okay. Count. Ms. Hodges? Want to take a guess? <laughs> Think community. To so be? Local health department? I'm sorry. Look. Okay, Ms. Kerr? B. <laughs> I said Final it before, answers? Actually. Final answers? So yeah. when you're you know, it's so easy for me to say. I've, I've taken a couple of different inquexes and what have you. I've always, always passed them. Not to brag, but when you read the scenario and you read the question, look at it. When something's capitalized and what have you, you know, I just wish I could just put my brain in your brain. But it's like some of these things are just going to trip you up. Community. Hospital has nothing to do with community. Medical association, medical, that's trying to trip you up, even if you don't know what the word is. The nursing association, no, just no. So your only option for me would be the health department because every, every county has a health department. Just like you ask about a school nurse, every county, every county has to have a health department. Someone has to be responsible for the health of the, the county, the county reports to the state. The state reports to Centers for Disease Control. Centers for Disease Control reports to who? The World Health Organization. I don't want to say report to, but as far as guidance, guidance, guidance. When I worked on a reservation, I, when I work, I still work on a reservation, we're a sovereign nation. So we're a nation within a nation. There's 500 Native American recognized nations. They have their own health department, but they are still in a state or a county, so they report, everybody reports to something. So then if you wanna to go to the health, the health department is the best answer because they're gonna they're gonna keep your trends for your community, for your county. State, you wanna look at the morbidity and mortality rate of, or, of gunshots, uh, death by suicide in your state. You just Google your state, put in state of Arizona, blah, blah, blah. And then if you want to look county, especially if you're doing, if you guys go on for your master's and you need to do research again, I don't want to keep you guys over any longer, but we need to keep going. Yes, yes. So number six, read that. And I would like an answer when you're ready from Miss Jessica. I don't know who I haven't called on. And um, Jessica and Jasmine. When you're ready. Take your time. I'm looking for one single answer. Is it A? And then my, and who was that, Jessica? Okay. And then, Is that your final answer, ladies? Is it A? All right. The answer is A. Does someone have a different answer or have you guys talked about rates and incidents and prevalence? I'm gonna, I'm looking at Ashley. Have you guys talked about incidents and prevalence? at all? Okay, let me just give you the, the short version. Incidents, new cases. Prevalent was prevalent, was already there. So let's just say there's certain areas um, in, I don't know, some countries where Ebola is endemic, it's there. They always have cases of it. So then um, you want to look at 
incidence is new, and then prevalence is existing. So for my particular, and this is nothing to brag about, but my particular Native American community, which I, I became fascinated with them because I did a, I did my first MPH paper on them when I was taking introduction to public health in grad school, was that the tribe, that the, the nation that I work for, they have the highest incidence, new cases, and prevalence, existing cases of type 2 diabetes of any group, ethnicity, race, black, white, purple, orange, in the entire marble galaxy, the entire world, from the pygmies to the people in Australia, to the folks up in the Bering Strait, they have the highest new cases and existing cases of type two diabetes compared to their group, their numbers. So if you have 10 people in your tribe and nine of them have diabetes, so that's what's just like, because for me growing up in the South and working for an H, you know, going to the HBCU and working as a health educator for an HBCU Florida and m back home, it was always, you know, HIV and AIDS and the black communities and what have you, which is still everything is important and every, that was my community. But when I read that, I was like, oh, I thought we had the most diabetes. It was, I was fascinated. I've been hooked ever since. Okay. All right. So then number seven, um, you guys read that. And then who honestly, Miss Lyons, I wanted to answer from Miss Lyons and Miss um, Keg on number seven, when you're ready. Ladies ready? You can ask um, so what you got for me. I would probably say maybe local community diabetes incidents by race, ethnicity, gender. I don't know what it says after gender because I can't, I think there's more stuff maybe oh, scroll I'm over. Sorry, but, yeah. Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Um, no, you can't read it. So let me let me help you out here. Okay. All right. So for number seven. To, I think this was better than just reading it off the paper. At least you guys could see something, but you need the full view. So I apologize for that. I think I uploaded this poll to another Zoom. Anyway, no excuses. I don't do excuses. To be able to better understand factors influencing the occurrence of diabetes mellitus type 2 in your area, which of the following data would be most, that's that capital word, helpful. Number one. So I'm looking for one single answer. Number one, are you gonna look at state level diabetes prevalence rates by age, education level, and socioeconomic status? That's what you're missing. Number two, local community diabetes incidence rates by race, ethnicity, gender, and socioeconomic status. C, national data on diabetes incidence rates by gender, age, and socioeconomic status. Or D, community hospital diabetes registry date by name, age, gender, and, and race, ethnicity. So that's what's me and race, ethnicity. I, think I chose thinking. the second one also, yeah. the local community. And you are absolutely correct. That local and that community should have just, that should have dried out. <laughs> it should have popped right out. Popped I mean, right out. It's easy for me to say, cause I've been doing this forever. But it, I didn't even need to, I mean, I shouldn't say that, read the end of it, but maybe it's like, this is the free answer at the end and I missed it. But state, I don't care about the state, I care. National, don't care about the national, it's not happening in my hood, don't care. Community hospital, it's the hospital, that hospital, even if you don't know what a diabetes registry, so diabetes registry, Ms. Kerr, you were asking about registries and what have you. A registry is just simply a, um, a 
group of people that share something. So you can create a registry. Like I created a registry of all of my pregnant teens at a certain place. You can say registry list, whatever you want to do. But there's a way, there are certain programs where you can, not programs, computer programs where I can like input certain things. I want to know when she's due. I want to know if she has this. Like it's a way of, a registry is a way of keeping track of folks. But anyway, we don't, you don't need to worry about registries in this particular class. So number eight, who has not given me an answer? I've been doing random stuff. Be honest, because I'll find out who has not answered. Don't, come on. Brittany, have you answered? I guess I haven't. Who's, who, I'm sorry, can, who's, who hasn't? Aisha. Aisha, and who else? I haven't. Brittany? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you guys tackle me. Just read it and whoever's ready, answer. Don't talk over each other, please. No, what we do. Yeah. Um, I think it's lack of community knowledge of health diets. So your answer is C? Yes. And then was that Brittany? I'm sorry, I only have part of the people. I've no. Asked. Aisha? Yes. Brittany, what's your answer? I agree that it's C. And both of you guys are incorrect. But that's okay. We're gonna get you the answer. Who else, who wants to give me an answer for that? Jonathan. Can you read the question? Jonathan, what's your answer? Um, give me just a second. Let me look. Real <laughs> He's like, uh, I'm not on. I'm yeah, not on point. Honestly, C, C did, you know, also look good to me as well. Um, being that that's not the answer. Um, I know physical activity would be important. And I know gestational diabetes can lead to diabetes. Um, afterwards, I, I'd probably go with A. Is that your final answer? <sighs> um. I'm just asking a question. Yes. I know, I know. You're making me think I'll about it. I'll go with A. If it's not C, then yeah, I think it's A. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. Yeah, I think he's A. Final answer, Miss Elizabeth? Yes, ma'am. You are absolutely correct. I'm going to give you a virtual hug. Let me, let's break this down. Let's break it down. It's okay. It's okay. This is a judgment-free zone. Which risk okay. factor... Okay. Which risk factor for poorly yeah. controlled? Remember, their diabetes is poorly oh. controlled. Remember, because remember, you you gotta always sometimes you gotta go back and read your scenario, which is fine because she's like question number eight. We have a couple more to go. Um, I'm not gonna tell you. I don't want you to be like ah. Um, so remember, you're thinking as a community. You're thinking your community of folks, your Latinas, your Blacks, your Whites, and what have you because the diabetes is not controlled. So which risk factor for poorly controlled diabetes is better addressed at the community level than at the individual level? This is prime community health nursing all day long. You're not thinking of the, ind the individual is important, but the community, 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 and A, okay? So when you do your community assessment, let's just say you're out, this is the only, only one that really will be better help because they already have the tertiary, all right? So then the lack of community knowledge of health diets, that's, that's primary, that's me doing a speech, talking to them about things, but they already have it. So when I get ready to send them out and boot them out back into the community, I want them to be able to, to control their diabetes. And one of the things is exercise. Um, that this entire group can, can do if they have, if they lack a regular a place to do physical activity, that's that can negatively impact their diabetes, controlling their diabetes than anything else here as far as a community level. So a little tricky. But again, just kind of think, think primary prevention, secondary, tertiary, they have it. So just gestational, first of all, you got to be pregnant. So you got some guys in there. So you can already cross that off. 
And if you don't know gestational, then that you couldn't cross it off. But then for me, it's like, well, gestational don't matter because you got men. So you know that's not an answer. And then um, generational family history, that's to me, I'm thinking primary. They already have it. So, all right, moving on to number nine. You guys are doing great. We're keep continuing on, right? We're keeping on, keeping on. So um, number nine, I'm just gonna start with, um, okay, Elizabeth and Miss Lyons, could you answer number nine? Please, when you have a moment. Which of the Elizabeth? Oh, Miss, the one that just, Oh, goodness gracious. All right. Lizzie and Miss Lyons. One answer. This is a trick one. Is it uh, the hospital database? Yes, yes, Based yes. on zip code? Okay. Yes, and you're probably like, well, you said hospital. <laughs> no. I know, I know. Well, the zip code is kind of what drew me the to. The zip code is, there you go, there you go. Yeah. I may have worded it differently, but I still love, this is my, this is my go-to case study that I've used with all of my students because I do clinicals as well. I just love it because it ties in so much because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to use epidemiological data. And again, I know these are, just know that you're always trying to get a perspective on the risk population in your community and you want evidence. You always are looking for evidence. So if you know prevalence, which is existing, that would have been the word for me if I had to rule out existing cases. And there's, again, you can do registries and you can pull in information and you can do all this kind of data. For, for my master's in public health, there was biostat, with, they looked at numbers, environmental health, there's different types of subgroups. I always did the, um, I was the uh, health education piece. So that's where people like look at trends at CDC and they see cases and they declare outbreaks and that sort of stuff. You, you wanna, uh, that's part of that surveillance piece, if you will. Um, okay, number 10. Read that for me. I'm going to ask for, um, everyone's done an amazing job. Rodriguez, Robinson, and Angel. You can give me an answer. I want individual answers from you ladies, please, because this is our last one. So only have two options. I only can see the two answers. Oh, yeah, caramba. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, hang on. How about that? <laughs> now I can see a thing. There we go. I apologize. I apologize. Not perfect. Don't want to be. I think the public health nurse, um, the superintendent. Letters. Oh, you don't have letters, come on. Okay. But that's, okay. we can do A. No, 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 it, it says A, ignore me. Public health nurse, okay. You said superintendent, okay. I have. Uh, um, I guess those are my two answers. Okay. Um, the next person who I named, I can't remember. Just I tell would me. B and D. B and D? Yeah. Public health nurse and then a physical ed teacher? Yeah. 
All right, and I'm looking for one more person. I think that um, it should be like the pu public health nurse um, and the local residents and the primary health providers. You're closer. So there's actually four answers that I'm looking for. Does one more person want to guess? I won't call on any names if someone wants to, to guess for me. Which ones did they already say? I didn't catch the last one. I say public health nurse, um, the health care provider, and the local residents. I'm looking for four answers. Is it the one she listed plus the physical education teacher? That is not one of the answers. The, the school district superintendent? Yes. A. A. Mm -hmm. Public health nurse, please. <laughs> So A and B. I need two more. Is it D and E? E is I'm correct. Yes, care provider. No, high school principal. But let me, let me, let me, let me explain. Hey. Let me. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Everyone. I don't think anyone really got this correct, and I. I don't know if I would have. So, which of the following individual needs to be involved in the planning of the walking path? Now, I guess you would have, okay. Mm, I don't know where to, how do I want to do this? What is the walking path? Like, what do they mean? So a walking path is a, not to be funny, it's a walking path. Like, I don't know. It's like you guys, to from school or? Like, it could be a walking path anywhere in the community. Okay. It's in the community. So we have a walking, like Arizona is like really like, oh, healthy, healthy. So we have walking paths everywhere. So when you think of, uh, again, everything is community in the community, you don't necessarily have to know, in my opinion, from this scenario, which you will never see again, where the path is, you just know it's going to be in the community. And who would you bring to the table to plan about this walking path? And I know the question is kind of jaded, but this, I just, I don't know. I've been doing this so long. This is how I would think of it. I'm thinking who's in my community. So just hear me out on this. This is this is so, my go ahead. Would it be B, C, D, and E? It's A, B, E, and D. It's the school district superintendent, the public health nurse, the local residents, and the high school principal. Everyone that I've ever done this with, they're cool with everything, but the F, they don't, doesn't make sense to them. Let me try to explain why I, I, I think this is, the, well, I know it's the correct answer. So think of, again, this is, you, you have a community, they're going out to the community, they have the diabetes, you're gonna put in a walking path because a walking path is needed. You don't necessarily need to know in the scenario where they're gonna put it, just know that this community needs a walking path, okay? And then you are gonna help organize the very first meeting of where we're gonna put and talk about this walking path. There's a lot of, okay, the school district superintendent, if you were to bring someone, you would definitely bring in this, this, if this was your list of people, that's what I'm trying to say. If this is your list of people, all right, and then you have to select all that applies. First of all, you got to say, okay, doesn't have all the above. So that means, oh, they really want me to pick some people. This is how I see the test question. If it says all, all the above, I could see where that might be like, okay, I will pick everybody. But then you definitely are going to cross out the primary health care provider. He has nothing to do with my community walking path. I mean, would you would you go to your doctor or nurse practitioner and say, hey, you know, we're going to put a walking path around your around your building or something. I don't know. Anything that goes on inside his clinic, he would know what we want to know about, but not he wouldn't he look at you like, why are you coming to me about some walking path? 
I'm trying to treat patients inside the building. All right, tell Ms. Smith to come in on time for a diabetes checkup, but he, he, I wouldn't bring him to the table by the walking path. I would definitely bring in the public health nurse. I think that's that's something that's we don't we don't have an issue with that. You definitely want to bring in the local residents about putting something in their community because they live in the community. And then your other two, the physical education teacher, not for the walking path, for the community. Because it has nothing to do with her, her actual school. So I would cross her off. Now, the only two that are left are your school district superintendent and your high school principal. How I see this, okay, how I see this is that the school district superintendent is involved in the community. I know, I know. Well, then. Um, but I would school. want, if I had an option, if I had a choice of, you got to think how I see it is that whenever I worked in the community, if I didn't, and if I, especially when I was new, I made so many mistakes because I don't know if you guys come from close knit communities, but if you did not invite the right person, you would get your feelings hurt. So if I'm going to do something that affects the community, I would, I would invite this school superintendent as well because he may help advocate for the walking path. So I wanna, I wanna build my village of folks. I guess my thing is, is that the superintendent, he's in charge of many things and has a lot large influence than a, a PE teacher. Like how would you choose which PE teacher? Maybe, you know, that's, I don't know. Again, don't get tripped up on this question because you're not gonna, you're definitely not gonna see this. And then, I would invite the high school principal. Now, why they chose high school, I don't know. Over Again, again, the high school principal, again, I'm looking for people. Whenever you, you build your, um, you build your supporters for your community, and if they give you a list of these folks, you always want to check off who's definitely not somebody you need to invite to a meeting. Think of it that way. Don't think of it more of like, who is this school superintendent? If it says select all, you know you're gonna need at least two answers, at least two. You cross out your provider, you cross out your teachers. If you're gonna put anything in somebody's community, you wanna to talk to the residents, you always want the public health nurse, okay? And then the others, you might get tripped up with them, but just know that the more the nurse and the local residents are not, um, the public health nurse can't do it by herself, even though she represents the public health, health of the public. So she's gonna be at every single meeting about anything about her community. And then the local residents, but you still need your, you need your supporters. I'm gonna, I don't wanna beat that question down. Just know that the more folks that you have that can influence getting this walking path done is who you want. Moving on with our lives. This is the very last one. And then I am gonna have you guys read it, please. And then let me just, I'm gonna have Miss Battle. Mr. Whitehead and Miss Chavez answer. I need one answer, please. Um, so because it says take in the hospital, I would, um, I want to go with C. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Just because it's referencing in the hospital. I'm thinking C as well. You would put up posters in the hospital? I'm thinking B. Report the new resource to the school health. Okay. So Mr. Whitehead, explain your answer, please. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, so when it says take in the hospital, um, uh, to use this information to help the clients, I mean, I think putting up posters in the hospital 
um, would be the best way to raise awareness, you know, and just, you know, get the word out there that there is a new walking path. So that would be, um, that would be my rationale. Okay. And then anyone else that chose, um, someone chose B? Did somebody say B? Did I not hear? Yeah, I did. Okay. Show me what? Is it actually, is it A? I don't know, because when you announce it. Final answer. Final answer. I'm thinking A. (laughs) Final answer. Does anyone else have anything they would like to share voluntarily? Actually, I'm thinking about D. It's between B and D. Because for D, um, you have to include it for them to know they have to do that physical activity. You need to let them know there's a walking path somewhere, you know. Anyone else have any other answer? Um, I think it's... So so let me just say this super quick. Let me interject. So so I'm looking again, and um, the end of the piece of that says physical activity resources. So that, I just want to be fair, that was cut off. All right, so so someone's like, oh, that I can't. See that? I think I agree with B, just because like well, what, you're, you're gonna want to get it. What number? Uh, this is number? Cheyenne. Um, B, that? the report, the new resource to the social work department, okay. because that way the social work can come up with like a class or like an invoice or whatever that they can send to the whole hospital, and then okay. the social work is where we go for resources for our patients, and so. Okay. Social work will have that ability to kind of spread it I see faster. You. I see you. Anyone else have an answer for me? This is our last oh. one. I agree with her. Last that was one. also my rationing. Okay. And is anyone else have anything else to share? The correct answer is D, as in David. Let me break it for you hearts. Let me talk. How did we start? Let me explain. You are a nurse. I'm taking you full circle. You are a nurse. Remember, you're at a local hospital in an urban area. Urban is city. I should have explained that, but maybe I just thought maybe. Okay, and the past month, you have discharged, sent home the following 10 people between the ages of 23 and 35 who are hospitalized with short-term complications of uncontrolled type two diabetes. This all started with you realizing that you have discharged the following individuals with uncontrolled type two diabetes and you are concerned, you review your discharge planning for this population of young adults. So at the very end of your case study, one thing I love about case studies is that there's a beginning, you flow, and there's an end. So at the very last question, What is the most important action that RN, which is you, remember, you had an issue with this, you can take in the hospital, because you're staying, they're going, to use this information. So now all of this we talked about to help. And we can agree to disagree, but A, this is an evidence-based public population health nursing assessment vignette that has been tested and pilot tested and is evidence-based. Who am I to argue with the answer? Who are you? The answer is revise discharge planning documents to include local physical activity resources. And that is that. Week two. Questions. Did everyone get the email out about their groups? I sent that out last night. I had to do a little revising because I was told my group was too large. So now we've got blues, yellows, greens, reds, purples, browns. Does everyone please review your announcements? Please get in touch. Oh, am I keeping you guys past? Is the class over? 
please review your announcements. Please review your, and get in touch with each other. Um, I know the announcements are heavy. Whenever I was in school, I would print. I'm a visual person, highlight, read, ask questions. So um, all of us are charged with the same information that we share, whether you're in Tuesday's class, Wednesday's class, Friday's class. So the announcement look exactly the same because we are all consistent. I'm going to stay on for a bit. I do have a review, 8 p.m. Eastern. Any questions before I let you go? Would the will the review be this Zoom link? Yes, ma'am. And okay. we'll have other folks chiming in as well. So that we 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 there should have been an announcement sent out about um, the different again, the review is optional. So like say if you couldn't stay on because you got kids to pick up or you had something else to do. You couldn't come to mind. I sent you guys the other um, teachers that have our instructors, professors that have already Zoomed for this week. There's, a, there's one tomorrow as well. I'll send that out as soon as I figure out the email and send that to you. Um, we're all, regardless, we're all charged with, regardless of the section, sending you guys the, the links to the YouTubes after so that you can review. I have read and seen them all. So to make sure that we're all, some of them are our, some of them are 30 minutes. We all have a PowerPoint that we're supposed to go over and emphasize a few things. So I'm gonna stay on for a few minutes and then I'm gonna end this, take a drink of water and go to see the ladies room. And then I'll be back on at 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you guys so much. We will see you in a week. Awesome. Is that the so same? You? It's our same Zoom for the review, right, Professor? Forever. Thank you so much. Forever. You are welcome. You see you. I'm going to stay on to see if anyone has any additional questions about what we covered. And if not, I'm going to end it in about five. Take a quick break and then be back. Miss Christy, you good? Okay. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Talk to oh, me. I was here because um. I missed a little bit of my um of my in my class, so I had to like yes. you know. Okay, I knew you were okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, gotcha. but, I was like, I don't know that name. Yeah, it's okay, but I'm gonna be here in a little bit for the review because it's like, okay. I, yeah, I want to get more concepts, you know. Yes, ma'am. Okay, alrighty. One, Any questions about okay. what we covered? And if not, what's I'm gonna transition for a few minutes, so I'm gonna take a little break myself. <laughs> Oh, no problem. I have come one. Back on. So I'm going to end this and then I will come back. Okay. Okay. All okay. right. Okay. Thank you guys.